uh, that particular map was, uh, is based on archaeological sites. Uh, the bigger map on the right side of the handout is uh, Swanton's reconstruction of Caddo settlements that was based on his reading of a lot of you know, historical records. You might notice there were two major clusters of towns. There was a northern cluster that is sort of identified with the name Caddo uh, and the southern one with the name Hasinai. And then east of the Hasina, which isn't so conspicuous on that map, there were other people along the Red River in Louisiana who are associated with the name Nashitrush and Caddo means a pawpaw place. Uh, and that's come down to us in the name of the city of who that spelling. I guess it's called Nakatosh in, in English. Um, so it's kind of a French spelling. Uh, so I, in one on the hand that I listed those three major major divisions of the cattle. The lower map on the left suggests, you sort of get an idea from that, how these people were sort of uh, squeezed in by first Spanish uh, intruders and then French and then British. Uh, eventually, in uh, 1855, they were uh, pushed into a small reservation on the Bradley River in Texas. But only a few days, three years later, four years later, in 1859, they, they were being threatened to, to be massacred, actually, by white settlers in that area who didn't like Indians at all, any kind of Indian, and were forced to move, kind of uh, running out of the Brazos Reservation in the middle of the night uh, uh, and going north to the present location in the neighborhood of Anadarko, Oklahoma, which is where they are now. Uh, the, I, I thought I should mention them something about this word Texas. So the first word in two in the bottom right of the first page there um, is the first word there is, is the cattle word Taisha, which means friend. And uh, it was evidently the way the people in the, these various cattle towns referred to each other, I think in contrast to the Osage who were to their north and who were their traditional enemies. Uh, the Spaniards heard this word Teixa, uh, well, they spelled it T-E-X-A, uh, Teixa, uh, writing as best they could, and then added the Spanish word, Spanish plural S, and that's where we get the word Texas from. Um, looking at three, at the top of the next page, uh, after the move to Oklahoma, the cattle settled down in three principal groups, uh, one called Nadako, which is sort of bumblebee place, and that's the source of the English place named Anadarko, the Kadodacho, the first two syllables of which are the source of the name Caddo, and the Heine. Uh, Heine sort of is a somewhat divergent dialect that's spoken in the area of Fort Cobb, which is west of Anadarko. But these are very closely related, mutually intelligible dialects. And the name for the entire group, were, in English they're called Caddo, and in, in, in Caddo they're called the C9 now. Um, Caddo culture was clearly part of the southeast culture area as opposed to, the, let's say, the plains area. They were agriculturalists. They, they weren't heavily dependent on the buffalo. And their religious practices and their clothing and so on were similar to those of other people in the south, southeast. Um, but their, at the same time, their linguistic affiliations were with languages spoken in the plains. Uh, and you can see that in four in that tree diagram, the Kedoan language family. They split, I mean, the linguistic split was a long time ago between the Caddo, the ancestors of the Caddo, and North Kedoan people. Um, and produce, you know, very great differences between Caddo and these other languages, which later split into Wichita, Kicha, and several kinds of Pawnee um, and uh, Rikara, which is very closely related to Pawnee. Uh, in five, I showed <coughs> just one of the cognates that runs through the entire family. This is the, the noun root for leg. Cas, uh, well, I reconstructed it as cas with an initial ejective k. Um, uh, although it's an ejective 
now only in Caddo. I think what happened is the other languages lost, well, they don't have ejectives, so they lost that aspect of it. Uh, the full word Katsu in Caddo for they, uh, which is completely cognate with the full words in the other languages, uh, is now applied in Caddo really only to non-human legs and to wheels of vehicles. Human legs are referred to in Caddo as the word uh, and I show you a breakdown of this word into three morphemes, a nominalizer at the beginning, kak, uh, roughly, you could say in English, that, which, and the noun root, kas, and then the copula, ya, which, and there's a lot of business that happened to that, so it comes out to be kak, kak, meaning literally that which is a leg, but it's, it's the normal way of referring to it, a uh, human leg in the language now, and, and uh, most body parts are treated in the same way, like that which is, uh, you know, arm or whatever. I showed in six that the Kadoan family, this entire family as a whole, uh, may be very remotely related to the Iroquoian and perhaps the Siouan language families with, within this larger entry that has been called macro Siouan. I, th I think I'm the one who made up that term originally. It's, it's controversial. But, but I thought I'd show you the rather striking resemblance between some of the Caddo and the Northern Iroquoian pronominal prefixes in um, seven. There's more, more to be said about several of these forms, but at least this gives you a kind of general idea of how this relationship is at least tantalizing. Um, I guess I won't take the time to talk about each of these, but uh, particularly like this indefinite, or, you know, that it means one does such and such, which uh, in Caddo is ye and you, and in Proto Northern Iroquoian is also ye and you, and, and behaves in a very similar way. Um, in much more recent times, Caddo has been receptive to borrowing from neighboring languages. It's not at all averse to borrowing things. I say that part in contrast to Seneca, which is the other language that I've worked with a lot, which until recently I haven't liked to borrow much at all. Keller borrowed both from other Indian languages and the three European languages that uh, came in contact with. Uh, in eight, I gave just a couple examples of borrowings from Indian languages. The first example I, I've always found particularly interesting is it seems to have been a borrowing from Tonkawa. The Tonkawa lived in Texas to the west of the Caddo, and their word Canos, uh, which is a shortened form of Mexicanos, uh, and referred to Mexicans, seems to have been borrowed into Caddo uh, with an application at first to all Europeans, but then it got nar eventually narrowed down to just Frenchmen. Mexicans came to be called Ispayun in Caddo from Espanol, and the English, or, and later the Americans, and people like me, came to be called Inkinishi uh, from English, obviously. Uh, 